I have to say, my hair is absolutely on point today. And we found Floof's collar. He just walked over and he's like, here this, drop. And I was like, awesome, put on. And he went, wait a minute, Floof don't like this. Cause now you know where Floof is every time he makes a move. Cause he jingles. Good evening or morning or whatever time of the day it happens to be. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lego Mike Gregor and welcome to the Bumbling Chef. On this week's episode of the Bumbling Chef, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make something nummy from my my from the homeland from the motherland um i've never been to hungary um but you know my my parents also uh never went to hungary uh my my grandparents they were first generation america so the great grands they their motherland that's what that's their homeland i really should I visit Hungary sometime? Should I do that? We are going full Hungarian supper, minus the goulash, because I didn't have the budget for that this week, which really sucks because I wanted to do goulash. So I'm going to be making an authentic, authentic Hungarian dish, chicken paprikash, which is essentially just chicken and sour cream. <laughs> it's not as weird as it sounds, trust me. On the side of that is gonna go a Hungarian side, Testa, which is Hungarian fried noodles and cottage cheese. Again, not as weird as it sounds. Trust me, the goulash was gonna pull it all back together with normalcy because goulash is essentially just a really good stew. But again, didn't have the budget this week. So we're gonna do the best we can with what we've got. Everyone hugs, bring it all in. We're gonna hug it out. We're gonna have our, our customary uh, every episode before recipe hug. Where's my apron? Found the apron, found the hat, which I didn't realize I was missing. We're golden, pony boy. So step one, you've got to get a larger skillety fryy panty thing. Got to turn on the fire. And then we're going to take our chicken. Ignore the clearance tag. I got chicken thighs. You can get chicken breasts. I'm just doing thighs because I haven't cooked with thighs in a while. Grim prefers thighs. And also, um, just ignore the clearance tag. There's That has nothing to do with it at all. Take your largest Dunkin' spoon and just slab a big old spoon of butter. We're gonna mount all that in that pan. That skillet is gonna be a butter trap in a few minutes. Cause this is not the this is not the only time we're gonna put a lot of butter in the skillet today. Trust me on that one. That's how you know it's Hungarian. Uh, it's butter, it's paprika, and it's garlic. That's how you know it's Hungarian. If it's all butter, all paprika, and all garlic. And all delicious. Hungarian, Hungarian. I should really learn more about my heritage. I'm surprised I don't know more. Turn that down a little bit. My dad went through this huge like genealogy kick when I was like 12 and discovered a Canadian sector of Nikuses. But I, hmm. Hmm. but I don't know about the actual Hungarian part of my family. I know about the Canadians that I am not directly related to, but not the. Hungarians. I'm a bad Hungarian. I'm gonna teach a Hungarian word right now, okay? This is learning with Professor Grego. Okay, Hungarian word. Buzzmeg. Say it. Buzzmeg. Okay, now go to your parent or grandparent. Say it. Say Buzzmeg. Did you do it? Okay, cool. I just told you to tell them to f off. That's what Buzzmeg means. Congratulations, you've all learned today. So once your pan of butter is thoroughly melted, you're gonna dab your chicken thighs off with paper towel, get all that salmonella right off that chicken, cause that's how you do it. Okay, show and tell, it's my show and tell time. It's the weekly show and tell. Okay, what's this? You're thinking lightsaber, right? Wrong, not a lightsaber. It's tongs, tongs, tongs. Yes, I got these at Goodwill for $5. I would say best five, I would say best $5 I've ever spent, but I haven't used them yet, so we'll see. We'll see if they're as good, as cool, as cool as they look. Cause this is amazing and I'm gonna use it every like day of my life now. All right, just dip in there, let's grab, start grabbing these chickadees. Come on, just do your thing, do the thing, do the thing, do the roar. Ow, drop it in the pan, it locked on me. These things locked on me. Come on, there we go. In the pan. Just keep loading them in the pan. We're gonna try to, we're gonna brown them on each side. Give them about five minutes. Have a plate standing by for when you are done browning them because they're gonna come right out of here and then onions are going in. Five minute time. All right, I got two of these babies left over. They are gonna go, um, 
They're gonna go over here. Just for now, I won't forget them, I promise. They're not gonna get forget. I have a non-impressive plate standing by. This plate is going to be what you put your chickens on while you put other stuff in that. That's That pan, that's your one cooking vessel. That's your one pan cooking vessel for basically this entire meal. Okay, while that's going, you got about three minutes on that. I'm gonna take my new fancy knives, not that one though. We're gonna start cutting up some onion. Cut this weird like umbilical cord off the onion, please and thank you. Let's just peel the initial gross outside layer off of our onion. Cause no one wants that. No one wants the withered gross old onion layer. Oh, I can already feel the, I can already feel the sting of the fucking fumes. This is gonna suck. I can already tell it's gonna suck. That's unfortunate. Okay, yep, it's starting already. It is way too soon, this kind of, this level of tears. What is this, up? Okay, I can do this. You can do this, just don't touch your eyes. Whatever you do, do not touch your eyes with your wet oniony hands. Where's my jet fuel? You know what, I'm actually gonna wait on the onion until I get that taken care of. So that way I'm not really playing with fire and blind. Why do onions murder my eyes? Why? So start your flipping, start taking your tongs and flip your chickadees. Damn it, lock again, here we go. Okay, these tongs are not the most efficient pieces of, of kitchen equipment that I own. Uh, they look cool, but uh, yeah, these are not the most efficient things to use. Maybe if I just hold them, maybe if I hold them differently, uh, I won't lock them or, uh, oh, I don't know, almost knock the pan off the fucking stove. Five more minutes on the other side. Five more minutes. Don't forget to take your pot holder and just lightly and delicately push this back onto the fire so it's not hanging half off the stove. I hope you guys enjoyed the first and last appearance of the lobster claw of the lightsaber lobster claws. They're shit. Let's throw these other two chickadees in here real quick. Just let these cook. These things are terrible. Awful. I'll stick with good old fashioned lobster claws. Oh yeah, look at those. Normal and falling apart because they're so old and worn. Love them. So while we let those other two pieces of chicken cook. Now we're going to go to the onion. I, I cannot, I am done procrastinating. We're going to cut this onion. It's going to be fine. Cut it however you want. I don't care. Just get it over with as quickly and as painlessly as you can. Oh boy. I don't, they haven't started, the tears haven't started yet luckily, but I can feel them. I can sense their presence. Okay. Yep. There we go. There's the tears. There's the hurting. Oh my God. Owie. Oh, I have goggles for this, but I keep losing them. I had them earlier this week, and I was wearing them around the house just to fuck around, and now I'm blind. Ah! Oh, now I know how Helen Keller felt. Oh. Ah! But old. Let's play with some hot grease. Yeah. Oh, that browned up really pretty, though. Whoa! Yeah, I'm under my feet. We're gonna open that window. That'll help. Okay. All chicken is done. For now. Uh, okay, there, there's smoke and onion fumes everywhere. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Oh my god. Why don't I just throw some fucking jalapenos in there too? Just make it an even fucking burn. Jesus Christ. So guys, all chicken is now browned. Again, we're just browning it. We're not fully cooking it. We're gonna throw the onions into that in just a second once the smoke kind of dissipates from the room. Then we're gonna saute the onions and start formulating our sauce. We're also gonna put the water in the pot. I'm saying this now more for my own sanity because I am way off course. All it takes is onions. And I suddenly don't remember how to cook. Cause I turn into a little bitch. So all of this here, this is what we want. Um, we want the we want the, the brown stuff on the bottom, um, not so much the bits of chicken skin that stayed behind. But um, that's ha that's what happens when you kind of overcrowd a pan. Unfortunately, we got still got the butter remnants. We still got the chicken grease in there. Um, we're gonna add more butter. We're gonna add some onions, some salt, some deliciousness. I don't know why I have the camera like this over here. Um, I'm just trying something. So we're gonna throw the heat back on on that once the smoke's gone, everything is kind of calmed down. I guess you don't have to turn everything off so the smoke can disappear, um, but it's nice. Put more, get more butter, 
in that pan. Oh God, sorry, Floof. I'm over buttering, I know. I know, I know, I know, but to be fair, it's my heritage. So we're gonna melt all that butter. I've already kind of scraped up uh, all of the nice little brown bits of chicken leftovers off the bottom of the pan, and we're stirring those all around. That's all gonna create some nice flavor. We'll add some salt to that, then we'll add our onions in, and then our onions will begin the process of uh, caramelizing. We're gonna have a lot of fun with those onions. We're gonna do some pretty things with those onions. Butter's still crackling. Let's drop these bad boys in. Drop in these some bitches, stir them all up. Make sure that they are nice and coated in our chicken butter delicious stuff. We've got our smoked paprika and our uh, fresh ground black pepper. Um, I say it's fresh because I just bought it. Oh, yep, there are those onion fumes. They're coming back around. We will need two tablespoons of paprika. I am using smoked paprika, which is just as good as regular paprika if not better, because it's smoked. Okay, that's a little bit more than I wanted. Okay. We're gonna do a tablespoon, we're gonna stir, and then we're gonna do another tablespoon. That's how we're gonna handle this. If you've ever seen, uh, that smells good. If you've ever seen chicken paprikash, um, it has this like beautiful reddish orange tint to it. That comes from the paprika. That is mostly the paprika. Um, the sour cream that you we are gonna add has a little bit to do with that too. I digress, we're just cooking. Okay, make sure that is all spread around and stirred and distributed evenly. Again, like make sure you're scraping the bottom of the pan regularly too, so none of the chicken, none of the chicken stuff gets stuck to the bottom. Because that's that again, that's good flavor. That smells so good. Oh my god, that smells delicious. Second, second tablespoon. There we go. And we go. There we go. Smoked paprika. You are the best paprika. Stir, stir, stir. Stir it all up. Oh, this thing is hot. I shouldn't have let the spoon lay on the pan because now it is burning me. And then black pepper to taste. The recipe calls for black pepper to taste. I'm just gonna add a couple dashes and stir that up as well. I'm not, oh God. I'm not a massive fan of black pepper. I think it's okay in certain situations in uh, mediation, remediation. What is that word I'm looking for here? In small doses, it is good in stuff. Um, but I also don't wanna overdo it because overdoing it is not great. We're gonna scrape. Scrape all that flavor off the bottom. It's not burn, if that's what you're thinking. It is flavor. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. As you approach the end of that like seven minute window that you need to saute the onions, uh, I want you to take your chicken broth. That's right, we're not just making our own chicken stock. We are making, we're, we're using uh, store-bought broth. Okay, so you're gonna want, let's do this over the sink. Okay, so you're gonna want a cup of broth. We're gonna put that right in here. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more than just the cup, because as I talked touched on last week, this is a solid measuring cup, not a liquid measuring cup. I guess there's a difference. Do a stir, 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 stir. At the end of that seven minute timer, we're gonna add our chicken back into the pan. If you're looking for a pretty red color, now look no further than this right here. That is beautiful. But we're just gonna add our chicken back one piece at a time. Try to nestle, it in, nestle them in as good as you can. I know that we still have two extra pieces that we couldn't fit in with everything else. I am gonna do my best to Tetris these things into place so that everything can be cooked together. And if not, well, then we just have two extra pieces of chicken that will get eaten somehow, some way, someday. Clear some room, clear a space. Okay, we got a hole, we got a hole makeup, guys. Right there, fantastic. And let's just, you know, all that delicious chicken liquid onto the chicken. Turn your heat down like a low simmer. Cover the chicken, and then we're gonna set our timer for 25 minutes. Um, we're gonna have it sit on a low simmer for that amount of time, and in that time, perfect opportunity to do up your pasta. So, we got our pasta pan, which, uh, so some breadcrumbs in that. Enjoy those floof. Take your pasta pan, fill it on up with that there water, and then place on your back burner, turning that heat up on high because that water has got to come to a boil so it can be ready for our delicious and nutritious egg noodles. Ah. So I don't know if it's supposed to be egg noodles or Amish noodles that you're supposed to use for this. 
I have used both my entire life. Both have been used. So I don't know which one is the correct one to use. So we're using egg noodle. Use Amish noodles if you want. Just don't use angel hair. Right before your water comes to a boil, we'll salt that bad boy, because salt your water, always salt your water. Don't ever not salt your water. Even if you don't remember until it's already boiling, salt it before you add stuff. If you forget before you add stuff, add it after the stuff. And just stir, you know? Sorry, Clue. Oh, that's sucky. I broke them. I broke my lobster claws. Can I fix these at all? Whoops. All right, fuckers, you get one more shot. Just one, though. Once your water starts boiling, you can add your pasta of choice. That is, oh my god, no. Oh my god, that is, that is so fucking much pasta. Oh no. Run hot water, run the hot water. Oh boy, that's not good. I'm breaking everything now. All right, get hot, get hot. Wait for it to get hot, and guess why you got two pans? In case you accidentally overload one pan with a lot of extra pasta. That way you can, you know, do two and have plenty of room for it all to cook evenly. Fuck! Can I go one week without a mishap? Just one due to my own stupidity? Come on! We have a spaghetti thing somewhere in here. But for the life of me, I couldn't tell you where it is, so we're going to use this lobster claws. We're just going to transplant. That's all we're doing. We're just transplanting these noodles to these noodles. That's all we're doing. That way we have two noodle pans that are evenly noodling it up. As if you didn't have enough going on on the stove, we're going to throw some bacon onto the fire. Uh, because the bacon is needed for the taste of. Because bacon goes in the taste of. I got a flu pair on this guy. Just going to take all this bacon. Fuck it. I don't care. I got nothing left to lose. Put your bacon into your cast iron. You don't necessarily need to lay these out in straight lines as I have done before, because um, this bacon is just going to get crumbled and or cut up and uh, thrown haphazardly into our pasta. So that's something cool. That is a beautiful red color. I'm gonna drizzle some of this, some of our liquid over the top of our chicken pieces. A little extra flavor, you know, it, it never hurts. The good news is, the way we timed this, at least that pasta and the chicken stuff should be done at the same time. The blue pasta, on the other hand, jury sell out. Dude, I'll say this, between the paprika and the bacon, it smells really good in here. <laughs> I'm leaving. On a jet plane, don't know when I'll be back again. See, I'm on a jet plane because I'm having jet fuel. When I started filming this episode, I had like five pot holders in here, and I lost all of them. Hello? Hello? Welcome to your first day at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Drain your pasta water. Look at that. Fantastic. Drain your pasta from the water. Throw the pasta back in there. We'll keep an eye on the blue one here, um, but we got a real quick. Pull the chicken out of there, put it back on its plate, put the sour cream in there, mix it up, 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 up. I'm wasting so much time doing this right now. All right, so big reveal. Ha -ha. I'm sorry for the noise. It is very noisy over here. There's a lot of uh, bubbling going on. I don't know how I feel about all that, but alas, here we are. We're just gonna take our chicken pieces out of the pan. Chicken pieces out of the pan. Out of the pan. Out of the pan. Yeah, out of the pan. So let's take, let's finish the paprikash up, then we will finish up the taste up. Uh, now that everything is cooked and done and just needs to get combined and homogenized one way or the other. This is sour cream. It's a fuck ton of sour cream. That is a professional baking term, by the way. We're just gonna add a cup-ish, that's probably a cup, right, of this stuff. Just, eh, get in there, get in there, get in there. Yes, get in there, get in there. Yes, good, get in there. I'm so happy the pressure's off now. Now that I know everything is working out, uh, I can kind of uh, stop panicking, which is always a lovely thing to uh, realize. So if you turn off your heat for your paprikash, I don't know if I explicitly said that or not, go ahead and turn it back on and just start stirring. 
because the whole goal now is to combine the sour cream with our delicious, nutritious sauce. Matter of fact, I might add more sour cream to this. I don't know yet. We just have to see. Stir slowly. Don't go too fast. Don't overdo it. Don't get ahead of yourself. This is not a race. You just have to understand that everything cooked, everything is good now. It just is all waiting on you. You have all of the time in the world. Time itself is literally bending to your will. You are the god of time, and you know you are the baddest mother around. That initial cup of sour cream is really just a starting point. From there, it is to your own like texture and taste preferences. So once you are satisfied, damn it, open, open, there we go. So once you are satisfied with your pepper kosh, uh liquid, you're going to put your chicken right on back in that pan. And it will sit for just a couple of minutes. It doesn't need it a whole lot of time. This stuff should be cooked by now. So it just it's just about flavor now. It's all about going to flavor town, as uh, as my arch nemesis from high school, Guy Fieri, would say. I'm just gonna put that there. That's gonna and then we'll just, you know, dump the rest of this fluid, kinda shovel these onions on top. Great. And then lower the heat on that and cover it up. That's done. Ow! Hot fucking cast iron hot! For our taste up, we need our bacon to get removed from its bacon pan and cut up and crumbled up into delicious, nutritious pieces that will get scrambled and sprinkled in to our taste up. You can put a little bit of this grease into the into the noodles. I like to do that, just a little bit, but don't overkill it. You can, because that is a very easy balance to throw off. You can very easily ruin this if you put too much of that grease in there. Ow, 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 I am hurting myself. Yes, I am, but it's for food. <sighs> First of the onions, now the hands. Fuck. Crumble, crumble, crumble. Make sure you get everything crumbled. It doesn't have to be like a fine, like tiny, minuscule thing, but it's going to crumble these bad boys up. And just make sure it's all taken care of. So just take your first handful, sprinkle it all over your noodles. This is the part of the show without precise measurements. Just go, just play it by ear, do what you want. Just put a, a spoon or two full of the sour cream in there and you're gonna stir. You're gonna stir, you're gonna stir, you're gonna stir. Stir, 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 stir. You're gonna add the rest of your noodles, the rest of your bacon, another uh, smaller, so it was one smaller kind of dab of sour cream. Now you're gonna turn your heat back on, and then we got cottage cheese that has to get added into this. Just gonna add a bunch of it, just cover the top. And then we gotta stir. Probably should have stirred before I did this. Where's a pot holder? And just keep going, keep stirring. Um, you will want to keep stirring because it's gonna fry. Um, I have very rarely been able to replicate this to my childhood specificity because my dad and grandpa were both able to fry the noodles and the cottage cheese perfectly i for whatever reason have a, have an issue figuring that out occasionally i'll get it but i don't know what the difference is what i do from time to time um sometimes i think it's because i add too much uh, too much of the bacon grease can cause that problem too much of the sour cream can cause that problem uh and also impatience can cause that problem which i am notorious for so this part, uh, I really don't know how long to tell you would to take it, because I don't really know. All I know is keep movement on it. Maybe don't do it as regularly as I'm doing. You know, let it sit for a second. Pow! Oh yeah. Let's ladle this stuff over the exposed bits. We all love pretty delicious sauce. I think this pan is gonna do what I want it to do. I'm seeing some browning on the noodles, which is what you want. You want the noodles to brown. It's kind of like a carbonara when you really think about it. I know this seems weird. I know, fried noodles and cottage cheese, any time in my life I have told people about this, they have thought I'm fucking crazy because it is such a weird combination. I will be the first to admit how weird it seems. But oh my God, when they all get in there and you get the bacon grease going, you get all that delicious, nutritious food, you can't go wrong. You can't, you can't really ask for more either. <coughs> ladle, ladle, ladle. Okay, so we're gonna start plating with our chicken. We'll go like two pieces per plate. That sounds like a good ratio. Why do you want blue? You're not getting any of this, dude. If you guys want, you can drizzle more of the sauce over the top of yo chicken. Dig deep, that way you get the onions, you get the kind of uh, sour cream infused stuff. It's not just the greasy stuff at the top. Um, it's the more flavorful stuff at the bottom. That's where the flavor is. 
and it's delicious. Like you can literally just dump that sauce with just dumplings and that's it. That was the whole meal. And just start putting your tasta onto a plate and drop it in the, in the sauce. You can put it off the side of the sauce. I don't know what your life is like, but you know, you do you. I feel like this needs something else. I am missing something. If you have like a vegetable or something, maybe throw that on the plate too. But for now, for what we've got, this is Toto's Tasta. Are you proud of me now? Does that look good now? Does it look like a heart attack? Does it look like the reason my dad died at 52? Yeah, probably. That is not my prettiest dish. I'm not gonna lie, that's not pretty. That looks, that looks like someone vomited on a plate. But I can guarantee you, it doesn't taste like it. I'm gonna start with, with some of this Tasta. I love it. I love that taste. Uh. So you have the noodle cottage cheese sour cream stuff that's all kind of melding together and it's all bound together by the bacon grease, which is phenomenal. This is one of those things that like people think it's weird because you say noodles and cottage cheese and it makes no sense if you don't, if it's not part of your life already, I guess. But it's so delicious. Uh huh. Now the real question is, can I get chicken off of here with just a spoon? Yes, I can. That's how tender this chicken is. You can cut it with a spoon. You, I literally just cut that with a spoon. That is really cool. I'm all, I'm 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 amazing. I'm having a moment. Just give me a second. You could put that sauce on anything, and it would make it amazing. The last time I made this, Grim saved the sauce and put it on steak. Pretty damn good. More of this chicken. It's so juicy. Like the chicken still has so much of its natural juices. And even the bits that don't have the sauce in it at all, you get the delicious oniony taste in the juices of the chicken. It's all very good. So that's chicken paprikash and Todos Tasta. Again, you think it's weird. You think it looks like vomit. Doesn't taste like that. So try it now, thank me later. And I'll thank you guys for watching this episode of The Bumbling Chef. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up in the button system, click the bar thing down there below. Leave me a comment, subscribe to LEGO Micro TV if you feel like it. You... <clears throat> Ooh. If you end up trying this recipe at home or you have a different taste of recipe, let me know in the comments. Let's have a conversation about it. Let's become best friends. That's what I want. I want to be best friends with you. I heart beef. Your beef. You are my beef. Don't tell Grim though, because she'll be mad at me. Floof is purring like a maniac on the hunt for like scraps that I might have dropped. And until next time, guys, as always, I've been Lego Mike Grego. You have been awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Say bye, Jingles. <laughs>